I experienced it myself a long time ago when I was little. They wanted me to be more beautiful and attractive to men. You know, here thin women aren't considered the same as fat women. This is one of the last remaining places that carries on a very ancient tradition, that of forcing women to eat against their will to become fat. Beauty is a gift from God. Some have it, some don't. My name is Giuseppe, and I have a mission to travel the world, to meet the most extraordinary people on the planet, and to ask them a simple question. What does happiness mean to you? Welcome to Project Happiness. We've arrived in Kifa, 500 kilometers from the capital Nuakchot. All eyes are on us because we're far from the tourist routes. Usually, Western tourists don't come here because there's nothing to see. We're here because this is one of the last remaining places still carrying on a very ancient tradition, the practice of force feeding, which means forcing women to eat against their will to become fat, because here a fat woman is much more attractive, and so it's much easier to find a husband. Now, the problem will be finding one. Not every woman wants to talk about it, but we're in the right place. The practice of women being fattened to make them more beautiful is deeply rooted in Mauritanian culture and beauty standards. A fuller figure here signifies prosperity, health and fertility. This custom is called Leblo, but it's best not to use that word in public because although 80% of women have experienced it, it still remains a taboo. Mothers are often convinced that there is no other way to ensure a good future for their daughters, and they force their girls to consume enormous amounts of food and drink, and inflict pain on them if they do not eat and drink. I certainly don't go unnoticed here, and some boys are even worried that I'm lost. But as soon as I explain what I'm looking for, they point me to a covered side of the market where there are only women. There I should find my answers. <laughs> We're in the marketplace of this village, where in this area, all of the women embroider traditional Maori cushions. Amazing. I've never seen such an authentic market. When I randomly run into these places, so authentic and sincere, I feel these are the adventures I dreamed of having as a kid. And it just happens randomly. You can't plan it, you can't write about it, you can't read about it in books. It just happens when you really travel. It's not easy finding someone who wants to tell her story, but even those who don't want to talk show me, through their refusals, the marks left by this practice. Faster than I thought, the news spreads of a bida, or white person searching for a woman to interview about Le Blue, goes around the market, and a woman invites me into her shop. Could you explain me how have you been force fed it, or what does it mean? We were at home. It's a months-long process during which you are forced to drink litres of basi. This drink is given to women in the morning. They have to drink it all day until the evening. It's made of camel's milk and millet. In addition to that, you must also eat a lot at lunch and dinner. Another fattening drink is gusi, made with milk, rice, peanut oil and pure animal fat. There are many ways to fatten girls. I experienced it myself a long time ago, when I was little. Only when I was grown up did I understand why they forced me to gain weight. They wanted me to be more beautiful and attractive to men. Here, thin women aren't considered the same as fat women. Why do force-feeded women here are more attractive than skinny women? Touching a fat woman is more satisfying than touching a thin one. Otherwise, men would feel they're touching another man's bones. And how do you feel now? You feel confident in your body? Yes, I feel fine now. Listening to this woman's words makes me think about what beauty really is. Mauritanian culture offers a unique interpretation of what is considered attractive. But the serious health problems related to weight raise ethical questions about the priority of pursuing an aesthetic ideal over the health 
of the people involved. There is a legend in Mauritania. It is said that in the oasis of Terjit, a tiny green spot in the boundless Sahara Desert, live the most beautiful women in the world. My faithful travel companion, Bo, knows a man who can get us inside. We just met with the village leader. There is a curiosity, a detail that you may not be seeing. Bo and the gentleman are holding hands. It is a sign of great friendship. Bo has known him for many years since he was a little boy. Now they are reunited and they express their affection by holding hands. In Arab countries, it is very normal and very common for best friends to hold hands. And we just saw it with them. Incredible story. But let's stop for a moment to talk about something that affects all of us. Every day to use free services or sites, we fill out forms or click on the allow or authorize button without really knowing what we are accepting. Although these services are free, they open the door for others to spy on our personal information such as age, gender, home addresses, family members' names and more, which is then collected by data brokers and sold to companies for marketing purposes. The good news? We have the right to contact these brokers and have them delete all our data. The bad part is that it would take us years to do it ourselves. But there is a solution called Incogni a really simple and effective service to remove all our sensitive data from the internet. Simply create an account and communicate what personal data you want removed. Then grant Incogni permission to work on your behalf and it's done. They'll contact brokers and make sure all your sensitive data is wiped. Click the link in the description for 60% off to try Incogni and finally erase all your sensitive data from the internet. Now let's return to the desert and listen to a really interesting interview. Coming here, we have discovered the, the beauty of a woman sometimes is based on her size. The more a woman is fat, let's say, the more she is beautiful. What do you think about it? There is an explanation. At one time, our ancestors thought that beauty resided in abundance. Today in our community, I can't tell you that a beautiful woman is thin or obese. In fact, obesity is now considered a real disease because people figured it out, but before it was considered beautiful. And what do you think about fat farms and force-feeding women? You know, I think they're not bad people. They're simply not aware of the consequences of obesity, but little by little more people are discovering it, and it becomes rarer to hear of families who force their daughters to become obese. And what is the meaning of beauty for you? What is beauty, in your opinion? In Mauritania, we say, eyes are all the same, but they see differently. So every woman is beautiful. It just depends on the man who's looking at her. You know? And let me tell you something. If we all approached life more calmly, everything would be great. If the world were not so tense, men would notice that life is really beautiful. <laughs> For me, beauty is everywhere. We're about to meet a woman who in this village is revered and respected for her physical appearance. In fact, she's the leader of the women and she agreed to meet with us. So we are about to enter her house. You have come all this way to know what beauty is. And now you have the beauty of a woman in front of you. <laughs> Here being beautiful means having a natural skin tone, like, like our ancestors, without makeup. But what is never said is that for many of us, our mothers crushed our wrists between two canes to force us to eat and drink until we became fat. If a woman is not fat, uh, so men don't even look at her. They don't look at her at all. A thin woman does not attract men. 
Men want women with full figures. The overweight woman is considered perfect. That is what is called beautiful here. But we all know that beauty lies in our kindness and not in our appearance. There are men who can see beyond appearance. And they fall in love with the congeniality and kindness of us women. Every woman is beautiful, regardless of whether they are fat, thin, beautiful, or ugly. A woman's appearance is all in the eye of the beholder. Before leaving Terjit, the women of the town invite us to see their greatest treasure. The oasis, an age-old refuge for the nomadic peoples of the desert. Oases offer water, food, shade and shelter in the most inhospitable place on the planet. And it is extremely fascinating to think that here palm trees and water, such normal things for us, are considered a true treasure, a rare beauty to be preserved. And I think in this very banal reflection lies the answers I was seeking. Our concept of beauty is not real, but conditioned by the context in which we live. Here, in Mauritania, we discovered the practice of Le Bleu, so violent and so far from our concept of individual freedom. While we, overwhelmed by the standards of beauty proposed by the media and social networks, we perceive plastic surgery as a normal means to achieve our unobtainable idea of perfect beauty. So, what truly is beauty, after all? On the way home, I am reminded of something I read once in my school books. Beauty, according to Plato, an internal beauty tied to morals, values, the spirit, and love. Each of us should be allowed to blossom into our own individuality, where beauty becomes the pure expression of what we carry inside.